Hey y'all, we're here in New Orleans and we are visiting a place that is affectionately known as the Museum of Bad Taste. Here in the French Quarter, I think this could very well be the most interesting place you are gonna go see. Let's check it out. This is the Museum of Bad Taste. And before we get going, I'll give you a little background so you can see. I say that individually, everything in here is hideous, bad taste, but collectively, it's fabulous. I will show you this right here is special. This is not just a tacky cigarette machine, which you don't see in many <laughs> homes, but it is filled with candy cigarettes. But that's not the main draw of it. This was Helen Mirren's cigarette machine. This is from the diners in the, in the 50s and 60s, and you would simply go through and pick out whatever you want to right here. Then you would come back over here, like in any jukebox, and hit B2. And let's see what comes up, okay? Because you would order up a hot dog, or whatever. There goes Juliet. beauty right here I found recently at an estate sale here in the quarter and of course how hideous it was I love that orange and if you look every place in my place uh, in my apartment is orange and turquoise and this fit in so perfectly and I'm going to show you something that goes along with it that is extra special to me wax fruit the real stuff from the 50s but this bowl beneath it was my great-great-grandmother's from the mid-1800s. So she would be so proud of me displaying <laughs> wax fruit in front of a cheap statue light like this. This is my audio-video uh, state-of-the-art system from, uh, <laughs> from the old radio to uh, the record player with the record tote. And I love this. This is from the 50s when girls wrote notes. And the look, it's so funny. They wrote love notes to their boyfriends in there. Steve, Joe, Bonnie. Let me tell you something about this. This came from Hawaii. My great aunt Audrey brought that back in the 60s. Look how tacky that is with these on and off boob lights. Tweak, 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 tweak. And then she also brought me back these Esquire playing cards. Woo! Oh my God. My great. Aunt Audrey was one for the record books. Cheesy! These stools, as you can see, are called the Eiffel Tower stools because they look like the Eiffel Tower down there. These are the original ones from the 50s and they're very hard to come by. But if you see them, they're just wonderful. And they go so well with this uh, lamp, which was from the 60s, that was suggestive of woman's breasts. If you look at those, with, of course, my uh, jukebox. And then you get down the black poodle, this, uh, the, the cocktail shaker, and the pink poodle. Uh, so I've got a little bit of everything for everybody. And when you're ready for a drink, all you have to do is order up. All right, guys, right here is the most iconic thing in my entire Museum of Bad Taste that kind of took us from the dinner table, dining room table of the 60s to a TV tray. And it was the Swanson Salisbury Steak TV Dinner. This little box, believe me, cost a fortune. What I paid for this stupid cardboard box, I could buy 200 of these. <laughs> 
TV dinners back in the 60s and eaten them all lovingly. I loved them. But this is really, this made a sea change in American dining in-home history. Okay, y'all, so it wouldn't be a bourbon soak life without a little bit of bourbon in it. So today, Sam and I are drinking Four Roses small batch bourbon, and you have to tell us about these glasses. Well, these are hilarious. When you look at them, I'm gonna get it up real close to where you can see. There was that old song, how dry I am, how dry I'll be, if I don't find the bathroom key. Now I'm showing, <laughs> showing my age right there, but that's funny enough, but you turn around on the back, and back here with a grease pencil, you wrote your name right here, and then you wrote your, like bourbon, you check that there, and then you would check your mixer back there to where you would know that was you in case you got it mixed <laughs> up. See, I feel like this should be my poor line for my bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot thank you enough with, for letting with us Tricky come. dick between us. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a, a, a third wheel. So Sam, how long have you been in New Orleans? I have been here for over 30 years in the French Quarter, but this was my second stay right when I graduated from LSU back in the dark ages, the Jurassic. I, uh, I moved here and started working for an ad agency when you had to call everybody Mr. and Mrs. and, and wear a suit coat and everything to work. So I've been here for, for quite a while uh, and I know where all the bodies are buried. Well, you, know? you certainly do. <laughs> and you're on probably the most iconic corner in the French Quarter. It is the most musical because it's the most musical corner in America, live music. Because believe me, my bedroom overlooks Royal Street at St. Peter. And the music starts, the live band would start about 10 a.m. every day and it would go to 2 a.m. Now, it would be about four or five bands would come through there, but they're all good ones. So uh, everybody fights over this corner. So I have live music from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. So. <laughs> <laughs> now your home is just a wonderland of treasures. And trash and, and crap trash and, and awfulness and, just and hideousness. And that's the look I was going for, not charm and beauty. <laughs> that's me. You get presents from people too. It must be a little tricky to balance what goes out. No, it's not, because I don't know where they are. You know, I mean, I don't know where I put them. I don't know where they are. I don't know how to drag them out. I don't invite those people back over because once they give me the gift, then I have to go out and dig it out, and I'd rather not see them and have to do that. Just kidding. <laughs> this is what people think. I people in the French Quarter live like. And I actually do yes, it. Well, this is their iconic view. They say oh, it must look like something cheap and awful and tawdry like that. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> that's an but entirely different the shoe episode. fits, wear it. <laughs> I think that's the best part about living here in the French Quarter. I know though, it. Is that you get this tremendous connection to everybody who's you around do. you. you and that's how we, we met. We met. Was you know, in a bar. Late night. Yeah. We were sitting there drinking champagne. Sam was across the bar and said, I need to know them. And so we just became friends. I know. I walked over and inserted myself into their conversation, which I do so well, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and the Here rest is are. history. Here exactly. we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam, I can't thank you enough. This has been such a treat to see. Well, me too. Friends. I love it. You know, the more the merrier. The, and people uh, walk through my home like, like they belong in the bedroom. So. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, do the math.